Hello again. We're going to be graphing square root functions with tables because that's the best way to start. And then once you recognize the relationship of what you're doing, you don't actually have to do that. Now some people might say, well if i got a graphing calculator I never have to learn. Yeah, I suppose that's true, but uh, you don't want to take that way because you don't really learn the mathematics that you're supposed to do. So that's it. We're going to go ahead and try to graph these. Now what's interesting about this is you should try to figure out the values that you're supposed to put in the table. And I suppose you could put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but I wouldn't do that, and I'll tell you why. There's a few reasons. First of all, you want to start with the starting point of a square root function. Uh, you can't put a number inside the square root that will make it negative. So I can't put negative 1 in for this one, or this one, or this one. I can't put in any negative number, actually, because it'll be an imaginary number. So what I'm going to start with is the smallest possible value that I can in order to satisfy the condition. And let me just give you a tip on how to do that. Whatever the number is after the x, inside the square root, it has to be inside the square root, is the number that you're going to start with. Well, you take the opposite of that number and you divide by x. Now that sounds confusing, but when we do our next set of examples with graphing, it's okay. But you'll just have to trust me for now, that the first value that I want to use for this one is 0. And you can take the square root of 0. The square root of 0 is 0. The next value I want to use for this one is 1, because the square root of 1 comes out to 1. Now, I don't want to use 2 next. Well, I could, but then you have to figure out what the square root of 2 is in your calculator, and that's kind of cumbersome. So what I would do instead is try to figure out the next perfect square after uh, 1, and that is 4. So when you take 4, the square root of 4 is 2, and then the next value that's a perfect square is 9, so I would take that one. And you get 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. And then 16 is 4. And I don't know if I'll actually be able to fit all the values in, but we'll just see how it goes. Well, what happens when we put a number in front? I'll show you. Uh, just like uh, what happens with uh, parabolas or linear problems or exponential problems, it's going to affect how high or how low a graph raises. So we got a 1 half in front of here. Let's uh, plug in the same value, 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16. When I substitute in 0, square root of 0 is 0, times 1 half is still 0. When I substitute in 1, square root of 1 is 1, but 1 times 1 half is 1 half, or 0.5. When I substitute in 4, square root of 4 is 2, half of 2 is 1. When I substitute in 4, 0, 1, 4, 9, oops. I knew I was making a mistake there. My fault. When I substitute in 4, the square root of 4 is 2, and half of 2 is 1. Pardon, that's what I meant to do. When I substitute in 9, half, uh, sorry, the square root of 9 is 3, and half of 3 is 1.5. And when I substitute in 16, that's 4, half of 4, 2. This graph is going nowhere really quickly. I mean, it'll raise, but it'll raise very slowly. Let me just make sure that's right. Yep. And when I substitute in the same values, and I'll write them down so I don't make the mistake again. When I substitute in 0, 0 times negative 2 is 0. When I substitute in 1, it's negative 2. When I substitute in 4, uh, square root of 4 is 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. When I substitute in 9, square root of uh, 9 is 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And this one should be negative 8, but let's just double check. Square root of 16 is 4. 4 times negative 2, negative 8. I've got my nice little graph here that I skewed over this way because I'm going to need more of these values. Not so many of those. And I don't need any of those, actually. So, we go ahead and graph. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, yes, I was able to fit it. Barely, but I did. So when I substitute in 0, 0, I get this, 1, 1. 1, close as I could make it. So it kind of looks like that. Basically what it looks like is it looks like a quadratic function 
Except it's like I would just kind of put it over there instead. You know, instead of uh, lining it like this, I did it like this. When I substitute in the second table, which I'll do in green because I put it in green. Something like that. Now, it's actually going to keep going up. It's going to go up extremely slowly, but it will keep going up and up. It doesn't actually have a limit. Um, some of you might say, no, it's going to, it's going to encapsulate itself. I don't know what a word I'm looking at. It's going to top itself up. No, it'll keep going up, and it'll go up very, 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 very slowly, but it'll always go up. Uh, it's, it doesn't have an asymptote. It doesn't reach its limit here. And then when I go ahead and I substitute in a negative 2 in front of this instead of a 1 half or a 1, the graph is going to look similar except it's going to be going down. Eh, good enough. Something like that. So basically, when I'm playing around with these square root functions, if I play around with them enough, you're going to basically no notice that uh, whether it's pos if it's positive and negative graphs at the same time, I can create uh, parabolic type shapes. But uh, when I'm working with functions, I can only account for either the positive or the negative. That's the um, that's the stipulation in order for it to be a function. So I'm going ahead. So I went ahead and I graphed these, and yeah. That's pretty much it there. What I do want to talk about though is domain and range because domain and range for square root functions tend, well it's not tens, it is different than other types of functions. So when I look at my domain for my first one, I can substitute in any x value from zero onwards, but I can't substitute in a negative. Uh, but the stipulation is that what can I not, what can, what x value can I not put in that makes this negative? That's why I always got to be careful because it's not going to be this easy. But for domain, I can put in 0 oops, through infinity. For range, it's simply how low does the graph start at and how high does it go. It goes from 0 to infinity. Some people would argue that it doesn't raise to infinity, but it will. I mean, it'll just keep going. For the second one, my domain is exactly the same. My range is exactly the same. My domain and range for the third one are a little different. My domain is still 0 to infinity, but my range goes from negative infinity to 0. And I'd have to write that down accordingly. Whenever you do domain and range, you're always assuming that it's from lowest to highest. So it'll never quite hit infinity, and it tops off at zero. That said, we're going to continue, but instead of putting a number in front of the x, we're going to put a number with the square root. Uh, we're going to add or subtract something with it, which uh, affects the domain of the graph. But until then, have a good day for now. Goodbye.